Hello you guys and welcome by another video about my orchids and today I'm doing a very very special uh, video because it's a care collab and I'm doing this with Nina from Ninja Orchids and uh, first of all uh, Nina thank you so so much for uh, letting me join in in this care collab yes I'm really really excited to talk about this orchid and uh, especially in this uh, type of video so um, I'm gonna start and um, yeah, if you uh, like to compare the co care collapse, especially when you are interested in the, the orchid itself, and you may have noticed already, but we are going to talk about the Colmenara Maysai Red. So a little bit of uh, history about this plant. If you buy a new plant, it's always handy to have, uh, to know what you did bought, because that's uh, easier to uh, get some care IDs. To be honest, I didn't have an idea when I bought this one. It was for me, like I said, a uh, beautiful blooms must have, like uh, Roger would uh, calling it, I think. And um, yeah, the funny thing is, I posted this online, so I would suggest you do that if you have some Facebook groups you are in and you have new new plant with no uh, not an idea, just post it in uh, a Facebook group. Most of the times, people are really willing to help you out there. Uh, so that uh, was what I did, and Roger, Mr. Roger himself, uh, I did this for me as a Mesa Red, Commonara Mesa Red. So then I did go to my computer and looked it up, and what I found uh, was that the parents of this orchid are the Rhynchostylus bictonius, it's a seed parent, and the other parent is the Oncidium carniferum, if I pronounce them right. But that's what I found. And it is listed as a intermediate to warm grower. Uh, for me, it's more an intermediate grower. I give it uh, quite some light, but not Cattleya light. More in between a odontoglossum and an Oncidium type of light. So it lights its lights, and I saw that also when the blooms start to open up here in my greenhouse, they are way darker than I had them in home. If I can find the picture, you can, uh, I will uh, show it on the screen now to compare it. So it likes its light. Temperatures wise, I would uh, absolutely list it as a intermediate grower. It can handle some cooler temperatures, it can handle some hotter, cold, uh, warmer uh, temperatures, but I think it's uh, intermediate. So intermediate for me uh, means around uh, at night 18 degrees and during the day uh, up to 25. It can take higher, I know, but I'm not sure if it really likes that hot weather, that warm. So, yeah, I uh, like I said, I agree on the intermediate part here. So let's start with a um, close look to uh, at the blooms because uh, this is uh, one of my most favorite color-wise and also shape-wise blooms that I have in my collection. The Mesa Red has beautiful red blooms and I hope these will show up uh, well enough. I th if I'm comparing it right now, it's bright here in my greenhouse, but my camera does have a difficulty with getting the colors right. It's really way darker than, uh, than you are seeing here. So that's why I'm happy I have some footage made um, yesterday in the evening where the lights were a little bit less sharp, less intense, intense. and I hope um, that will make a difference. We have a general uh, or a better idea of the uh, color of the blooms. Um, but yeah, this is mine. I really, like I said, love the blooms. But yeah, you have a, a variety of this with a, a white edge to the lip of the orchid, of the bloom, I'm sorry, and, um, but personally I prefer this one, it's just beautiful, it's almost a little bit velvety, that lip, it's very soft, it's just beautiful if you ask me. It's quite a big one, pseudobulbs are very big, beautiful, shiny, I really like them, and I will uh, put my hand next to them, so you have a general idea of how big these are beautiful and I think it's even bigger than the last one the one uh, the growth from uh, last year this is um, now it's not really this year's growth because we just started 21 of course but this growing season last growing season it matures this bulb and this one has the flower spike on it 
but yeah, they. Uh, I like the, the shape of them. I and generally I like uh, big arcs, big plants. The downside of that is that they uh, take up uh, quite some space. But um, yeah, it's really beautiful. I did change the position of the arc a little bit because my fell here is interfering color-wise with this uh, picture. And um, but yeah, like I said, they are big. They take up a lot of space. I don't have my backdrop yet, I'm working on that to make filming a little bit easier as you all know, we if we want to have beautiful blooms we need something probably mo more important than the blooms itself and that is a healthy plant and also a plant with a lot of roots well actually that's a healthy plant, of course but as you can see on the top of the pot it has quite some roots, it likes making roots I, roots. I never had a problem with g getting this architecture root uh, even in my new setup it came in a, I think a bark mixture, probably coconut husk, something like that I don't remember very well because I have this orchid for uh, three years now in my collection so I don't, don't remember the media when I bought it in but it's now growing in my self-watering setup and I will take it out so we can have a better look at the roots inside of the pot. So and there we have it outside of the outer pot and we now this pot is translucent enough to see the roots and as you can see it has many roots going on. And some older ones. We also have one sticking out of the pot there as you can see. I broke that one when I <laughs> did get an orchid out of the bottle, uh, not today, but a few days back, probably a few weeks, I don't remember at all, so I think it's dying, it's a little bit brown, but yeah, it happens, it's so inconvenient when they start putting out roots underneath the pot, because like you can see here, I'm putting it on a table now, or, yeah, then they, the root, those roots break easily, so yeah, I'm sorry, but it happens, but it doesn't matter that much because this plant has a lot of roots. Let's turn it around so we can see the back of the the pot as well. So I'm just slowly gonna turn it around. And roots, roots, roots. Beautiful roots. This one, uh, like I said, likes to make roots. I, I really like the structure of the roots. How they go, how they brand, and how they find their way through the media and that's why I like these transparent parts also uh, especially when you start growing orchids they are very useful so you can see what's going on but I still after all those years I have orchids I do like them because I like roots I don't know what it is but I really like the, the way how they grow uh, I, it makes me happy when I see a fresh green root tip in here it's such a good sign so yeah I, I definitely keep my transparent parts for that reason I really want to be able to uh, to look at the roots, to see what's going on there. I have a few roots here. They are a little bit dis discolored in comparison to the rest. That doesn't mean they are dead. They can shoot out, but they may be a bit older and just dying off. I, I'm not completely sure about that. But if you see that, don't panic, especially when you have that many good roots. Imagine what would be happening if I would repot it. Probably I would keep some roots, but I noticed this this one when I did repot it, it didn't like it. It lost uh, quite a few of roots. They did, some did branch and it made quite a lot, uh, quite easy new ones, but still, it, it's, for me, in my experience, it doesn't like to be repotted. Probably every orchid, every plant doesn't like it, but uh, you know what I mean. Some uh, orchids can cope better with it and do not uh, react that heavily on it when they um, when you do repot them but this one doesn't like it so if you can avoid it you should do it therefore so by uh, trying to avoid a repot as much as i can i gave this quite a big pot um let's turn it around backwards because um this growth was growing at the time when i put it in this pot so therefore i had quite a lot of room around it to put out new growth as it did and as it does at the moment. This one is matured, obviously it has the flower spike, so it had room, it had a lot of uh, room to grow new roots in. And I then transferred this plant, when it was growing this bulb, into my greenhouse. And I think it likes the greenhouse because it started a new gr uh, growth as a uh, 
reaction to the uh, uh, movement into the greenhouse I think from out from uh, out of the home out of my house into the greenhouse at least it's, it's trying to tell me uh, that it likes it here I think um, yes and of course it likes to uh, put up multiple growths I know that but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of nice to see that uh, that development here while it's blooming. So it's in blooming state and it's also in a growing state. And if those two come together in an orchid, for me that is a sign that the orchid is very healthy. And because the orchid uh, thinks that it can take both at the same time, so it can flower and it can also put out new growths with new roots. You can imagine that is a lot of energy that the plant needs to take from somewhere. So I think I'm doing something right, uh, giving this uh, the environment that it needs and giving it the feed that it needs, because it does both at the same time. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. A beautiful new growth. It still has room here to grow. That was uh, basically what I'm trying to tell you. But in most cases, with most of my orchids, if they flower on this side, they put up at least the first new growth on the other side of the bulb. It's something I just notice in generally with my orchid. So the chances are very big that it will start a new growth at least here. It may decide to make more new growth, so probably there will come another new growth. I'm not, I'm not uh, sure about that, but... And then we have a little bit of a problem, but I... Because I don't have much room here left, I probably need to repot it. And like I said, this plant doesn't like to be repotted. So um, therefore, yeah, I try to skip it skip the repots as long as possible even though it is used to cell watering it should be quite easy to up pot this because it's already used to the setup in my experience this one still doesn't like to be those roots to be touched too much it will be okay but yeah i try to avoid it as long as i can because i really like the view we have here beautiful roots beautiful healthy bulbs beautiful blooms beautiful new growth there's not much more to wish for, I think. Well, probably one thing. We also uh, discussed in this uh, care collapse the likes and the dislikes. Well, we had a lot of likes, but the dislikes for me is that it makes... Let me see if I can get it in screen. Yes, we see it here on this leaf. You see the discoloration there. Um, this wasn't there before I trans, uh, transported my this orchid into my greenhouse. My greenhouse, I'm, I'm, it's new, as you uh, may have noticed. I have it now for about four months. Um, I need to find a way to get the temperature stabilized. I like the drop in temperature at night and, and it goes up during the day. That is helpful to getting the orchids bloom. But if it gets too cold and it gets too warm too quickly, I think we get these marks. Um, I'm pretty sure about that, and yes, I know, it's probably a, um, a type of virus um, that's causing this. But what I'm referring to, what um, if your plant is not completely happy with, with something, I think the virus uh, will kick in, uh, at least easily. Even though it's a very healthy plant, as you can see, it still sh showed me those marks on these leaves. I hope it makes sense. So I, I think probably every orchid and every people, we hu human beings as well, we may carry some diseases with us. They are not in our way because we are healthy, we are happy, we do other things that we like, etc. But as soon as we get very tired, we get stressed, stress is really horrible. Probably this plant was a little bit in shock in um, when I transferred it to, into my greenhouse. And I think that is why it gives me these marks, and because these plants, um, as well as the oncidiums, but also the odontoglossum types, they give marks quite easily on their uh, leaves, in my experience at least. I'm still figuring this out, I'm, I'm not very good in, in uh, basically understanding diseases, I'm, because it's very hard to know which one you have, etc., how to deal with them. That kind of thing. But this is something I just noticed. It's just my simple mind. I watch my orchids as closely as I can and try to um, keep an eye on them and keep noticing things like this. And I don't know, yes, it's, you can see it on those leaves as well. It's quite a, 
a young uh, leaf it's of the new god it shouldn't be looking like this but i think it's cold damage that's basically what i'm trying to tell you but what is cold damage once again is it a virus or is it just cold damage i think it's both i hope i that does make sense it's just my thinking process don't get me wrong i'm not saying it is but i think if something is unhappy a plant an animal a human being and if they have something of a virus in their system it can take over easily because of the stress level but if you have uh, any thoughts on this please let me know i'm just curious and try to um, to avoid um, bad situations as much as i can of course also this leaf from the second oldest growth uh, you can see it here a little bit is yellowing up let me zoom out a little bit so it's easier to see and i'm gonna move the camera a little bit this is uh, it's an older leaf but not as old it's not so it's from last year's growth yeah something to keep in mind that is something the only thing i uh, kind of dislike of this orchid but can i really dislike it i think the orchid is just trying to tell me something and it's up to me as a grower to understand what the orchid is telling me so i can yeah re uh, react to a uh, response uh, as needed but i'm not sure at this stage yet So, as uh, may be obvious now and clear, is that I'm growing my orchid in self-watering pot. Most of my orchids, and also this one, it does take it very well, as you can, uh, as you saw on the roots. It really likes this uh, setup. It's also a, a very um, orchid that likes to drink and to eat, so it it um, drinks up this reservoir, uh, reservoir quite quickly. Most of the times, I need to water it twice a week, so that's quite an amount of water. But um, I must admit, I am a little bit um, naughty, I think, <laughs> because um, when you do self-watering or semi-hydroponic, you need to floss on a regular basis. Well, I'm working on this project for uh, over a year now. I did it uh, well before I started filming my orchids, but I am not flossing as regularly. I probably floss two or three times a year when needed. Um, this is a whole different subject, so I will make a whole uh, video about it because I need to talk th through very uh, well so uh, you know my thought process. But that's in short, uh, in a uh, short way to telling me what I'm doing with the stalkers, my growing method. And, um, but what I do is I keep an eye on the reservoir and on the water. So, and by that I mean I keep an eye on the parts per million and also the pH. The pH is very important for orchids, obviously. I think that's the first one, thing that is very important. And the second part is the parts per million. If you have the right pH, the plant can eat. So if the pH is way too low or way too high, the plant will not eat. So first the pH, then the PPMs. Um, I must admit, if you don't flush as often, if you rarely flush, at least in my case, what happens is and this is something i never heard on youtube uh, before but with other growth probably because either in, everybody is flossing as regularly as it should i think but what happened is that the ph is dropping it's not uh, raising uh, rising it uh, like it uh, mostly does when you see the test online with the leca or the pumice that rises the ph up no if you do it like this, if you don't flush regularly, the pH will go down, at least in my experience. And it will happen for me around uh, four or five months. Then the pH starts to drop. So to um, get rid of that problem, because it will cost you your roots, if you don't notice it, if you do not, nothing about it, it will cost you roots. It will burn them. I had it happened and um, that was something um, I need to en encounter because I was uh, doing something very differently so you have results you need to cope with those re results I liked it I like trying new s things I like not to floss or make it as easily as I can but therefore you need to uh, encounter your falls and try to avoid them or at least try to find a, uh, a solution for them I should say so let's um, yeah, pH is water. Let's see what the pH is and I will test the PPMs. But once again, keep an eye on your pHs. It's very important. 
So I grab my stuff, I have my pH meter and it should start at zero, come on. Well actually it shows me not zero because it stand, did stand in, uh, in water, I'm sorry, there you go. So it has a reading there but it's not useful because I have always some water in there. But let's see, and I like to start out when I adjust the pH, when the pH did get too low in the pot, I like to get it around 7 again. It's a little bit too high, but uh, with the fertilizer in the water, um, that pH, that water I will give the orchids is, uh, has a less high pH, so therefore I'm keeping this a little bit higher. I'm copying, basically what I'm doing, I'm trying to copy uh, what you see happening when you use LECA, when you first start, start out of pumice, that is raising the pH a little bit. I try to yeah, copy that process without flushing. <laughs> but let's have a look. I'm going to set it on hold. And I hope you can see this. I'm sorry. I It has a pH of uh, 6.90. The temperatures is, are 22 degrees. So that's beautiful. This is perfect. Nothing wrong with it. I really like this uh, this pH. I'm really happy with that. Let's test the BPM. So I have my meter here, parts per million. This one starts at zero. I was uh, confu a little bit confusing them, but um, this one is um, starting at zero. And let's set it. Oh, I'm sorry. I turned it off. Uh, <laughs> that's very handy, isn't it? No. Let's put the hold button instead. Yes! This is beautiful all as well. Look at this. I hope it's... You can see it, it's 63. Can you imagine that? Without flossing the orchid, it's 63. I haven't flossed this orchid in about at least 8 months. Probably even longer. So that is a very interesting, uh, I think, a very interesting video. But like I said, I will make a separate video about it because it's, it's, I have to tell you too much of it to understand why I did the project, how I think it's working. And um, yeah, that, so I, it will be on my channel if you are interested in it. But this is beautiful. It has a nice pH, not too high, not way too low. That was a one of my problems, like I explained earlier, is uh, what I did get without flushing, but it's beautiful. So, nothing wrong there. And of course, I did forget to mention one very important thing regarding to the measurements that we did. The PPM and the pH, well, especially the PPM, because 63 is telling you something at this point, but not that much, because you don't know how much I'm feeding them, right? So, therefore, what does 63 mean? If I give them every time 10 parts per million, that means I have a little sort of build up it's not a high build up I have a build up well in summer I like to feed my uh, orchids around a 150 well actually this is the max and I'm talking about the orchids who are growing in self watering my fantasy is a whole different story I will make a video on them um, as well someday but now I'm talking about, uh, about this plant and most of my plants with an exception of my cooler growers like the Miltoniopsis Maxillera that kind of those get a little less feed, but um, most of the times I give them 150 parts per million. I should say 100 to 150, that's the differentiation that I have in summer. And if we head into fall and winter, when days are shorter, weather is getting colder, so basically weather that the plants do not like, I start to reduce my feeding schedule to around 50 to 80 parts per million. Most of the times I, yeah, I'm, I'm around 50. I keep it, kind of like to keep it low. And I like the idea of weekly, weekly. Just a weekly feedings, not too much at once. And I try to give them quite a different, different variation um, in uh, the feeding itself. So I like to add some stuff in it. Try to get little parts of different things in there so the orchid basically can choose in what it needs at that moment. So by doing that I keep my PPMs quite low because I don't know what 
exactly what the argon needs. This might need some magnesium, for example. This might need some nitrogen. This is my Miltonia, Miltonia sunset. You know, but I, I, I will not give them individually feedings, if that even was possible. The other hand, how do I know what they need? I can show it uh, the argon. I may have an idea that it may have some magnesium struggles because the leaves get a bit yellow, for example, something like that. Leaves are maybe this. This is not weak, but if you have weak leaves, weak leaves, you may have a calcium deficiency, something like that. Yeah, you know, you get a point. So therefore, I like to give them a little bit of magnesium, a little bit of calcium, seaweed, etc. So they they can choose what they need. They can grab what they need. They can take it. They can eat it, and they can grow on. That's my philosophy behind my feeding schedule. Now you can better understand that 63 parts per million in that reservoir is nice. That tells me if I feed it with 150 parts per million and I check it and there are uh, um, there only is 63 parts per million left, that means that the rest is going into the plant. That's my way of looking at it. Otherwise, yeah, you may have a little bit of buildup, but I don't have salt built up. I, I really don't have. I can zoom in once again, but I do not have salt built up. This is one thing I really watch out for because I don't floss it off and I really watch my salts build up. That's with white crystally stuff that you may see on top of your orchid pots. It's not good. Most of the times they really hate it <laughs> and it may burn new roots, but I don't have that happening. So therefore I know this orchid is really eating, it's really enjoying its feedings, it gets, it's put out a new growth while it's blooming, what I talked about earlier on. So there's a lot of things happening and for me that's a sign that it's, it's basically is quite happy. For one exception is the yellowing and the leaves, a problem I should uh, try to solve and I will, but I'm not sure what is exactly the problem yet. But so therefore, and now you know that 63 parts per million at this stage is beautiful. It really is beautiful. I'm it's really I'm happy with that result. That is what I like to see in general with my orchids. Let's zoom in. It's that. Let me point it out. Yeah, yeah I think it's obvious already. Whoops, that thing there. Um, yeah, I keep calling it a water indicator, water meter, as it's basically called in the Netherlands. So probably. That's the best translation there, but um, yeah, this this is very important for my setup. This uh, gives me a, a note. Yeah, I now know how much water there is in the reservoir. We saw the water, as you know, I didn't clean it, I don't flush it. This gives me the indication how much water it is. I watered it yesterday, no, two days back, and I watered it I, uh, until that red thing is on top. On a lid, basically. So that's as that um, amount of water is now gone. Partially the arc has uh, drunk a lot, but also uh, because of the weather, I think it evaporates. So it's uh, basically a bit of both. But I must admit, this one is a drinker. In my care, it really li likes to drink and to feed itself with the water, and that makes me really happy. And one thing I would like to add in this uh, care collab as well is I have now a aerial root in the middle of the screen. I'm gonna zoom in very slowly, so I try to avoid to make you dizzy, but you see that? It's a beautiful green tip on that root. That is something I like to watch as well, because for me that is telling me that my humidity is shooting this argot in the greenhouse right now. I must admit, I try to um, get at my humidity around 60-70%, but it drops when it gets higher. This plant uh, obviously can take it, but in general my humidity is around uh, 65 And yeah, I think it suits this plant, because this aerial root is not drying up. It's still growing, and for me this is something I really like to watch as well with markets. What do, what do those aerial roots tell me? Do they dry up quickly? Do they burn somehow? Or whatever may happen to them. So this is all those little things I try to watch. And I, for me that is uh, a way, uh, yeah basically, I'm sorry, I hope that was a little bit fast. Um, 
for me all those things together are things that are very important it's the way basically for us or for the auger to tell us a story if it's happy if it needs anything so therefore I try to train my brain in, in noticing those things really important what is happening so um, yeah I, I thought that would be nice to, to fit in as well just to, those little things are can make a whole lot of differences and like I said this was a very special one I really really hope you enjoyed this uh, care collab uh, that I made today for you guys um, if you watch this and you want to join in if you have this arcade and you thought well I really want to join this care collab you can um, by leaving a comment on this video, I do not have an email uh, ready yet, but um, probably in uh, in the future. But if you leave a comment, I will uh, uh, get into contact with you, and we will uh, sort things out, and you may join this care collab. For now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye bye.